In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the upcoming pattern, which seems to feature a lot more storminess than what we've seen recently. Also, two very major Arctic blasts. The second one is going to be like a wintertime Arctic blast. I don't even know how else to put it. We're mid-fall, but it's going to be much more like mid-winter. We'll take a look at that in a little bit. We do see there is some storminess offshore of the East Coast. Uh, some of that coming on shore. We'll talk about that. That's for the Southeast. Still, the South Central United States featuring some storminess down there for these areas. The Northeast is dealing with a bit of storminess. I think there's some snowfall mixing in there. We'll zoom in in a while and take a look at that one also. And then there's some isolated activity, very light activity happening here near the Sierra Nevadas, as well as Nevada and Utah themselves there as well. Uh, let's just zoom into this area. First off, we always start from West to East here. Uh, and we can see that there is just this very, very light activity stretching across some of these hilly and mountainous regions, uh, especially here in the Sierra Nevadas. Uh, we can see some mixing going on. Uh, but for the most part, there is a very warm air mass currently uh, stretching across this region. It's called a positive. I'm not even going to draw it all out, but it's positive PNA. Uh, and this is basically creating a warm bubble for most of these areas, featuring above normal temperatures for the most part. Uh, down here in the south central United States, we could see quite a bit of heavier storminess here. Midland, Texas, they're uh, getting a lot of that heavier precipitation. A lot of it is to the south of Midland as well. And then we could see, again, Lubbock going to get some of that precipitation potentially coming in from the south for the third day in a row, or maybe more, I don't know. Uh, Oklahoma here having some light to moderate precipitation, I would say. Some of this stretching into Arkansas as well. Uh, pretty interesting stuff here. Uh, let's just move up to the northeast real quickly. Yes, there was some snowfall there. We'll take a look at that in a second. But uh, we see some light to moderate showers moving across the region. We had an Arctic blast come through. Um, we're seeing some precipitation just kind of glide across uh, the kind of northeastern and New England states here. And we can see particularly here in the White Mountains, or actually north of the White Mountains here in Berlin, New Hampshire, People always say I say that wrong, Berlin. I say it like the German Berlin, uh, but I think it's like you say it faster, but I, I just don't know how to do that. So to me, it's Berlin. I've been there. I have been there. Uh, so uh, Berlin, that's what I call it. Uh, pretty interesting town if you haven't been there. It seems like, it doesn't even seem like the United States, actually, this area of New Hampshire to me. Once you get north of the White Mountains, it kind of just feels like you're in Canada, uh, it feels like if you go further north than Berlin, you're just going to, like, be stranded and, and never see another person again. It's a very surreal experience. I recommend going north of there. The White Mountains this time of year are probably crowded with millions of people. It's quite unpleasant. The sights are great, but it's quite unpleasant uh, to experience, especially on a weekend. Uh, <laughs> if, you've, if you know, you know. Uh, anyway, enough story time there. Uh, we have this kind of storm system moving through, mostly light to moderate precipitation here. Uh, and as we look at the southeast here, we can see plenty of activity here offshore. And there is a bit onshore here in South Carolina. And it looks like Florida might get some of this happening onshore here of the eastern coast here of Florida. Yeah, a little bit of activity stretching uh, inland. Could happen more throughout the day today. Wouldn't be surprised. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on. And we're going to take a look at the upcoming pattern because there's a whole lot to go over. Now, here we are taking a look at the upcoming storminess. Things are quiet as we get our next Arctic blast we're going to see a very high precipitation cold front. If you watched our previous videos, you know about it. We're going to talk more about that today because it is it is fairly interesting. It's all going to start out with this storm system up here uh, for the northern Rockies up in Canada. Pretty interesting. This is already by Tuesday the 11th. And what we see happen here is things kind of spread. So this is a smaller storm system, but we see it kind of just stretch out here across a lot of these Rockies. So that's going to be quite interesting. And what we see is this becomes a 985 millibar low pressure center there, pretty darn far north in Canada. Uh, and this is going to allow for a cold front to start to develop. We see warm air rushing out ahead of it. I've, I've said this for maybe a week now, but I think this is a really good severe weather setup. I'm starting to see other people say that now too. Uh, it does just appear like a very, very good setup for severe weather. Uh, not good if you're experiencing it, but I'm saying good in, as it pertains to uh, the ingredients available there. Uh, it, it just seems like there is um, the wrong or right, depending on how you look at it, ingredients there to set up a severe weather event across kind of our middle portion of the country. Somewhere in here, I think, is the area. I know that's pretty broad, but uh, by Wednesday, we just see things explode with this cold front. 982 millibar low pressure center up here in Canada. Clearly a high precipitation cold front stretching down. 
cold air pouring in behind it. We see warm air rushing in ahead of it still. So for the eastern United States, you can expect one or two days of warmer weather in between these two cold air masses that we're going to see. Again, positive PNA really taking hold out here. We can see that jet stream doing this, still ridging here in the western United States, and that's forcing this cold air to move around this warm air mass. That has been the setup. That is the most important, in my opinion, that is the most important fall and wintertime cold air teleconnection uh, really that it exists. It dictates whether the cold air heads to the west or the east. If there's not a positive PNA, the cold air is going out west. Nine times out of ten, if there's not a positive PNA, the cold air will probably just be going to the west or at least the central United States. To get cold, deep air into the eastern United States, that positive PNA is a crucial ingredient. As we move further along towards Thursday the 13th here, look at this. 985 millibar low pressure center still up here. Look at how far stretching this cold front is. Uh, it might be ending there, but honestly, I, I want to make the argument that it could be stretching into the Gulf of Mexico here. Very crazy setup. Obviously, a ton of storminess here along the eastern United States out ahead of this. A lot of cold air bottled up in here. You see it's pulling snowfall down with the Arctic blast. We're going to take a look at the total snowfall in a minute, but you'll be able to see where the Arctic blast is heading based on the snowfall map. It's very interesting. Uh, as we reach Friday, we see a lot of this precipitation moves back up and we see the cold air begins to recede so really i mean if this was the winter time it would be a polar vortex we see this thing is totally independent of uh it's really cut off it's by itself uh, so for the most part uh this is an arctic blast it's its own system it's cut off and even if we take a look at north america this might mess us up here no but we see uh that this is totally cut off for the most part uh, from its source, and then this is just its own thing going on here. Pretty interesting setup. Um, I don't mean to get too complex there. As we reach later into Friday, we see this cold air mass kind of moves up. It kind of spins back up into the Arctic Circle, but we see something happening up here, and this is our next major Arctic blast already moving in. So Saturday might be a little bit of a warm-up Sunday as well, uh, but this Arctic blast is going to be far worse than the one before it. I don't know if it combines with the other one or what happens, but... Uh, this one is a much lower precipitation uh, Arctic blast. We do have some storminess here in the northern United States, uh, including snowfall. But this Arctic blast really allows for this deep Arctic air to reach further south and really just bring further below normal temperatures than the one beforehand here. Uh, 992 millibar low pressure center here. Again, bringing snowfall here to these regions, just like the one before it. Now we actually have a pretty well-defined cold front once it's out in the ocean, uh, it appears, but that doesn't happen over land. It happens over the water here. Uh, there would be a good opportunity for Nor'easter to develop along this potentially and move up that front. We see that happen sometimes. Uh, I forget, do we not see one? We still get kind of a low here on the first cold front that moves up just like this, potentially becoming a Nor'easter. Not as prominent as model runs prior to this one. And as we just watch this and get to the end here, really not much changes. We're going to have deep Arctic air. Whoa, that was a little big there. We have deep Arctic air still around for these areas. We'll see that on the temperature um, on the temperature anomalies in just a minute. Now, here we are taking a look at the total precipitation through the next 10 days. And if you're anywhere in the whites, we expect practically no precipitation. Your grays will be a tenth of an inch or less of precipitation. Your greens will be a tenth of an inch to half an inch. Your blues will be half an inch to an inch. Your yellows will be an inch to two inches. Your reds will be two to five inches. And then your browns will be five to ten inches of precipitation. So plenty there for the Gulf states and the east, eastern states in general here with these high precipitation cold fronts coming through. Total snowfall here. Again, you can literally see with your eyes where the Arctic blasts are going to be heading uh, in general because they bring this just plethora of snowfall with them. Very interesting. Uh, the heart of these Arctic air masses will be heading through these regions for the most part. If you're anywhere in the grays, we're expecting a dusting. If anything, your blues will be 2 to 6 inches of snowfall. Purples anywhere in here will be 6 to 10 inches, and then your pinks will be 10 to 20. Uh, we do see more happening out west as well, but also an increase here for the Great Lakes and the northeast where things are really picking up in a hurry here. Uh, over the next month, obviously, we will see far more snowfall than this, probably by the time we're reaching November into December, and then... By time, you know it, will be in January in full-blown winter time. Now, for the air masses here, just the, the total uh, temperatures here, 
We see we're already in an Arctic blast that's kind of coming to an end here as we speak for Monday. It kind of comes to an end by the time we're reaching Tuesday here, October 11th. A lot of warmth across the nation compared to normal, that is. It won't actually be warm, but it will be, you know, compared to normal, quite warm. Uh, Wednesday, it's going to be a lot of the same. Thursday is when we see this Arctic blast, this first one really roll through where we see below normal temperatures stretching. This one will not be quite as potent as the one that follows it, uh, as we see right here. This one right here is going to be moving in. We still see cooler temperatures along the eastern seaboard there. But this next one is going to be far more potent, as you can see. The greens featuring 10 to 15 degrees below normal. We even see these blues begin to pop up for Monday, October 17th. These blues within the greens are going to be about 15 to 25 degrees below normal, which is a far departure from what's typical. And this just sticks around all the way through Wednesday the 19th into Thursday the 20th here we're taking a look at. Look at this. Still just hanging out here. Uh, by the end of the model run, like I mentioned earlier, so October 20th here, we still see this Arctic air mass fully just sitting here in the eastern and central states of the United States. Very interesting stuff. Be sure to tune in daily as we do upload every single day. You can subscribe to get those updates in your subscription box or even turn on the notifications. That'll actually sometimes, sometimes at least send a notification to your phone. It doesn't do it all the time, unfortunately. A lot of people complain about that, actually. Uh, we also... Um, do some live streams sometimes with the bigger events as well. So there's a lot of exciting things coming up over the coming months and hopefully years. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below with your thoughts. And I will see you guys in the next video, which of course, as always, will be tomorrow.